Welcome to the Brass and Woodwind Shop. I'm almost done with the slide trumpet. The next thing to do is put a water key on the end of the slide. And after that, I'm going to buff and lacquer this. I'm not sure if I'm going to get all of this done in this video. It will probably be finished next week. Right now, I'm going to get that water key installed. And I'm going to take it off of this old coronet. First, I have to get the water key off. And this is really easy to do. You pull out the hinge rod and then this comes right off. And on this one, they're not all the same. This one has a little spring in the middle of the water key. There are five parts to a water key. There is the hinge rod, and then the water key spring, the water key, and soldered onto the instrument, there's the water key bridge, and then the water key nipple. I have the tuning slide out in the open so that I can work with it. And here's my torch, and I'm going to light that. And I'm going to get the rag ready, and the rag uh, takes the parts off. I heat that up to temperature, and that came right off. Oops, I it on the carpet. I don't want it on the carpet. Okay, I got the bridge off. Now I'm going to get off the water key nipple. So I heat that up to temperature, and pull that off. There it goes. Now I'm going to clean up the old solder off of the water key bridge and I'm going to switch that around for the water key nipple. Okay, and I'm not damaging it, I'm just uh, holding it with the little vise here. So I'm going to take the old solder off of that too. And then I will be ready to solder that on. Whenever I solder a water key onto a trombone, I have to be very careful to get it on the right side. Because if you get it on the wrong side, then you have to take it off and do it again. I always remember that the mouthpiece goes onto one side, and then the water key goes on the other side. So I'm going to put the water key on this side of the slide. I'll put that in the expander just to hold it. I'm not expanding it, I'm just holding it. I'm going to solder on the water key nipple first and putting it where it needs to go then I'm clamping it down with the solder clamp. The solder clamp keeps it in place when I solder it. This is a very easy solder joint to do. It just takes a little bit of heat and then a little bit of flux and then I'm going to solder this. Um, I, have the, I have the clamp over the hole in the water key nipple. Otherwise, I could just put the solder in the hole and it would work fine that way too and it would not make a mess. But, uh, okay, that looks good. But I have the solder clamp in the way, so I did not do that. Now that that is there, I'm going to take the clamp off. Now what I'm going to do is put the water key on the water key bridge without the spring. I'm also going to put on a water key cork, and the water key cork will get burned when I solder, but it's a used one and it's going to get thrown away anyway. Put the water key right over where it's supposed to be, and then clamp the water key. And, uh, clamp it into place, and make sure it's lined up. The reason I took the spring off is because if it was on there, the water key bridge would not sit like it's supposed to. So this looks good, so I'm going to solder that on just like that. I'm going to turn that sideways so it's easier to get at. And this is another easy solder joint. A little bit of heat, a little bit of flux, a little more heat, a little solder. There we go, and that is good. Now I'm going to wait for that to cool and take it apart. It's a few minutes later and this is cooled off, so I'm going to neutralize the flux. And what this is, it's ammonia mixed with some water and it neutralizes the flux so that it stops eating away at the metal. Okay, I'm going to clean that up. That's cleaned up and take it apart. And the old water key cork, I'm going to take that out and throw it away. There's one more thing I need to do, and that's drill a hole to let the water out. These drill bits go from a number 60, which is fairly small, 
up to a number one. I'm not sure the size of this exactly, but it, it's not that big either. But there are many different sizes in between there. They go up in size at very small increments, so you're pretty sure to get the size of drill bit you need in here if it's between this size and this size. If you need something smaller than a number 60, these are numbers 61 through 80, and they are very small. The smallest one is 13 and a half thousandths of an inch, and you can barely see it in the video. What I'm going to do is look for a drill bit that will fit in there. Let's see, a little bigger than that. Okay, that looks good. That's about the right size. And that's a number 20. My dad found this drill bit holder at an antique mall in Elkhart, Indiana, and he bought it and gave it to me. And it has worked very well over the last, oh, what, 25 years or so that I've had it. I'm going to use my bench motor to do this job. I'm going to put that in there, and I'm putting it in most of the way because I do not want the drill bit to go in and then come out the other end. So I'm putting it in most of the way so that it will only go through the one layer of metal and not two layers of metal. I have a foot pedal to control the bench motor, so I'm going to turn that on and then drill out the hole. And there it is. The water key is done. I'm going to leave the water key off until after I'm done with all the buffing and everything on this. Now it's time to strip the lacquer off of the bell. There are different ways of doing that. They make a product called Lacquer Stripper and it's actually for stripping lacquer off. You would use that when you're overhauling an instrument and you want all the lacquer off of it. However, I do not own any lacquer stripper. I do have phosphoric acid that I use for cleaning instruments and if you leave the instruments in for too long then it does strip the lacquer off of there. However, it also can eat away at the metal if you leave it in there too long. Usually I leave instruments in for about 10 minutes, but this time I'm going to put the bell in. I'm going to leave it there for longer, probably about an hour, which will start to take the lacquer off. And then I'm going to finish by buffing the rest of it off. This bell needs to be cleaned anyway, so I'm going to clean it and strip the lacquer off of it at the same time. I'm putting the bell in the chemicals and I'm going to leave it there for probably about an hour, something like that. I went home for lunch and I came back and here's the bell. It looks like, eh, looks like some of the lacquer has come off. It should make it a lot easier to buff the lacquer off now. With my fingernail I can just peel up some of the lacquer. And that is the reason why you do not want to leave instruments in the chemicals for too long. So I'm ready to buff the bell, and I use my bench motor for this, and you've seen the bench motor already in this video. I do use the bench motor quite a bit, and I'm going to use it again for buffing. I'll put the spindle on there. The spindle holds the wheel. I'm going to use the Tripoli buffing compound and the Tripoli wheel, and I need to keep the wheel straight or else uh, the buffing compound gets mixed, and that can cause problems. I'm going to put that on there, and I always need my safety glasses for this because you never know when a part is going to go flying. Now a part will probably not go flying with the bell, but you just don't know what's going to happen, so it's always a good idea to be careful. And then buffing gloves to protect my hands. Then I use an old t-shirt to keep the bench clean. I do not have a dust collection system, so I use the t-shirt to keep my bench clean. And then when I'm done, I take the t-shirt outside and shake it out. So I'm going to get started. I'll start by putting the Tripoli buffing compound on the buffing wheel. And I'm going to buff this. It shouldn't take much to get the lacquer off of there. And I'm only going to buff as much as I need to to get the lacquer off. I'm not getting ready to re-lacquer yet. I'm just cleaning off the old lacquer. And also there are a few places where there were dents. I'm going to buff that down a little to help smooth it out. But I'm not going to try to take off very much of the metal on this instrument. If you buff too vigorously with this, you can take off the metal and make the metal too thin. Or sometimes you can go all the way through the metal. I've done that like once or twice before. And I think that was in college when I did that. But you do want to leave as much metal as you can on the bell where it's supposed to be. So what I'm doing is I'm just going over the spots with the lacquer on it. 
think I might use a smaller wheel though. This one's the thicker one. I'm going to switch to the smaller one and that way I can focus on where the lacquer needs to come off better. I'm not going to make you watch me buff the whole bell, but I am going to buff this off. I'm also going to buff out the places where there is the solder. I'll show you how that works. So if you can see there, most of the solder is off just from that quick buff. After you clean up the layer of solder with the heat and wipe method, it leaves a very extremely thin layer of solder and it buffs off very quickly and easily. However, you can see right there that there was a small dent underneath where the brace was. I'm going to go in there with the mandrel and take that out after I'm done buffing. I'm not going to make you watch me buff the whole bell because that would get pretty boring, but I am going to show you after I'm done what it looks like. And if anything interesting happens along the way, I'll show you that too. Here's the bell. I got all of the lacquer buffed off of it. And also there were some dents that were in the bow. And if you remember from previous videos, they were pretty bad dents. Once you get dents out, buffing them can help smooth them out a little bit. And you can still tell that there were dents in there, but they're a lot better than they were. That's all for this video. Next week I'm going to use the Red Rouge buffing compound. I'm going to do the final buff on this instrument, and then I'm going to lacquer it. Then, after it's done, I'm going to find someone who can make some music on it. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos, and also look in the description below for links to related videos.